Alright guys, we're back here with another video. Kareem, Sam, and Dennis. Uh, this video is going to be more of a random topic. I'm just going to ask these guys questions, see what they come up with. So, let's see. First question, uh, since we are kind of talking about it already. Keep it brief, keep it brief. Just like, right when I say it, what first comes to your mind. A couple sentences. Amazon's trying to get into the healthcare IT industry. What do you guys think about that? I love Amazon, not sponsored. <laughs> sponsored? Not sponsored. <laughs> sponsored. I think uh, um, coming from a rural area, I, I never had lots of big city malls, big, big store malls, so I love the idea. I think it makes it um, accessible to get, to get products that you otherwise can't. Okay. Bureaucratic red tape for interstate distribution of meds. But whoever decides to get into that market would be very profitable. Oh, speaking of which, I didn't even know. Did you see the news about Amazon actually, aside from the pharmaceutical stuff? So like a couple days ago, they announced that they're trying to do like electronic health records, mm -hmm. which is pretty safe. Yeah. It sounds to me like that's a great opportunity for telepharmacy. Uh, or, you know, someone has to talk to the, the patient about their medications. So, so, you know, get your medication next day, and then there is a link to something that pharmacists can help counsel or a line or something. So, there will be some opportunities for some remote pharmacy jobs. Did, so, did, you don't have to put any comment to this one, but just a yes or no. Just very curious. Do you think it will bring in more jobs for pharmacists or less jobs? For pharmacists, yeah, for probably pharmacists. less. Less. More. I think less. What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Mm -hmm. I don't know, they're a game changer. Could be more, could be less. Think of it as, as a way Amazon is now taking on taking on the malls and you know in the next two years twenty five percent of malls will close because nobody shops at malls versus Amazon. That's already going on too. There mm -hmm. why would you need to go down to your C V S or Walgreens if you can order your meds online, get consulted online through your Alexa, and then have it shipped to your door. Um, I think, well, I guess well, I say yes because from a dispensing part, yeah, it's going to hurt. But from an opportunity to have more pharmacists working in a remote role, I mean, it's going to expand. So we're going to be shifting. And if they're trying to really take over, they're going to need a lot of people involved in that project. I see there's going to be a lot of like mini consulting firms that are going to be working with Amazon and mm -hmm. that's going to lead to a lot of volatility because those are already, like, they go out so quickly with just PBMs, I've seen it all the time. So that's going to be a new area or a niche in pharmacy, but I mean, it'd be a good opportunity for some. Yeah, I think it, to me, for me, I think it can go either way because job loss is No, Brian, true. you said it was a yes or no answer. <laughs> well, yes, yes, I'm yes, the moderator. Yes. I get to choose. I get. You cannot say either way. It's not a yes or no answer. I actually would go with uh, what Sam says is more because I think healthcare records <laughs> being digitized, you know, because it's newer, there's just going to be so many more job opportunities out there in healthcare IT. And because we don't really have a great way of um, being standardized, how to roll it out. Um, it won't be very efficient initially. So they're just going to end up having more jobs because they can't get this done or this done or this project done. So they're just going to end up having more jobs initially. But um, let me segue into a different question that's very similar. What do you guys think about the future of informatics jobs in general in light of a couple things? The first thing is uh, obviously Trump trying to repeal Obamacare, which we know has a lot of legislation with legal use. Uh, the second part is more so a bias towards EPIC, but with not many institutions having like major EPIC implementations, and with the VA going with Cerner, what do you guys think about job opportunities for pharmacists who have EPIC experience? So. It's kind of open discussion. What do you guys think? I think if you're if you're keeping it in a very narrow view, of what opportunities do you have with one specific software vendor? 
uh, if you're only going to limit yourself to that vendor when you're looking at, at your future or other employment opportunities, it's going to get much more difficult. But I think one of the best things and one of the interesting things about technology is it's constantly evolving. So we know what we are and what our systems are right now, but five years, ten years from then on, there's going to be constant innovations. There can be new software, new products, or, or different um, expansions of, of current, current companies that work there. Okay. I think you hit upon probably one of the primary, and I would say one of the few down, downsides of being in informatics is that because we're all, all siloed in, in our current expertise in our electronic health records, it's hard to break out of that potential that particular position. Like if I were to go to Cerner today, I would be just as good as some other person just graduating from the school that has that might be more technically inclined. Yeah, I might know more principles about informatics, but but when you're given tools to use, those are the ones that you can use. And so I think that's one of the issues. I, I think though the field of informatics will continue to grow. I think America actually, the United States is is far ahead of the world in terms of our rollout of electronic health records. And and when you look at and, and I know Sam disagrees, but you know, <laughs> for for people who are looking to convert to Epic, there are a lot of opportunities outside of the United States. Epic has offices in Copenhagen, Epic has offices in London. Epic has offices, I think, in one of the other countries in New York. And, and so their customer base is continuing to grow, even if you know it doesn't grow any more in the United States. Well, the thing to say is that um, you've seen, well, I've done research and I've read studies, places like Australia, where they all have the same EHR system. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to leverage all of that data. And so I feel like they have, I mean, obviously these different systems Know, socialist, communist, whatever the case may be, but they've put themselves in a situation that if you're in that role, you have so much flexibility. Everyone's looking at the same thing. Everyone's using the same system. So from a research perspective, from a innovation, everybody's on the same plane. Here, we're talking about interfaces for everything. You know, we have to recreate the boat because someone has a different electronic health record. So there is um, inherent challenges. I think um, if you're more on the automation side, it's a little bit easier to transition because if it's another site using the same automation and, and it's smooth, you know, we're just talking against um, interfaces and standard languages, which can work in really most EHR systems. So uh, it, I guess it really just depends on how deeply invested you are in a certain area. Like if you're really in oncology build, it might be very hard to go to a certain system and do their oncology build. But, you know, you're doing automation in your site that has Pixis or uh, Omnisil in another site, I mean, it should be, you know, apples to apples. So I think what you, you're saying is that um, informatics, specifically related to automation, is the best way to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So That's if you're looking for... And so the, if the worst way to go would be informatics as it relates to oncology. Targeting. I would agree with that. <laughs> that sounds right. Kind of there we go. Right. There's your answer, guys. <laughs> that, that sounds right. But I think go they all, have to look at all the um, the success the VA has had, being able to know everything that their patients are doing. You're going to use the VA as a success. Yeah, because <laughs> although their system he, is very he hard to He doesn't actually use a VA. <laughs> I know I have not. You're but. an individual. <laughs> You know, they're, they're successful in a concept in, in a way that, okay, yes, I can access my patient anywhere in the United States, yeah. but they're also limited by the functionality of the system that they can't make changes until you change basically the entire nation. A lot of red tape, for sure. I mean, they're one of the pioneers mm -hmm. um, that has such a large database of yes. records. Um, why did you think of VA all of a sudden? Oh, because they have the same system throughout. So for all of the, the same where, network. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think they might have different versions. I know it's CPRS and Vista. Was Vista. It like that? They might know they have their issues with data and re requesting data. So I mean, there's a lot of red tape like you were talking about. But I mean, a lot of the a lot of the different um, healthcare systems within the country, it is a huge investment to to make a change or make an upgrade. So I don't think that it will always just you're not going to be abandoning one for another. Um, you, you, you're putting a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money and resources 
to build out some of these systems. So I think um, there's always going to be a job opportunities for us for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's kind of it. This is a uh, this is pretty good length video. <laughs> Everyone start copying me, all right guys? <laughs> if you guys have questions for Kareem, Sam, or Dennis, uh, we'll post their LinkedIn's or emails. I don't know what you guys want. Whatever, you, whatever they want, we'll post their contact information, Raven. send them emails. Raven. Post, post yeah, Sam's what? Texas address. My, my Raven. My house owl. There you go. All right, guys, until next time. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, guys.